It is the nature of technology to improve, and its speed of improvement has been exponential. Exponential growth occurs whenever the amount of growth is proportional to something's magnitude. For example, the interest paid to a bank account is proportional to its balance. Whenever there is exponential growth there will be a constant doubling time. In 1965, Gordon Moore, who would later found Intel, noticed that the power of computers was doubling almost every year. The trend could be traced back well before the 60s, and it has continued ever since. Since 1900 we've had a 10 to the power of 18-fold increase in the performance of computers. Exponential growth occurs whenever there is a feedback mechanism. For example, the better our knowledge about building computers, the faster and more powerful computers we can make. The faster computers we make, the faster we can gather and process information to expand our knowledge, which includes new knowledge about building computers. The cycle repeats, and feeds on itself. We observe exponential growth in every measure of our knowledge, in the number of new patents filed, in the number of scientific articles published, and in the total amount of digital data stored. Today, is just a starting point. If the power of computing technology continues to double every year, then in a decade our computing power will expand by 1000 times, 1000 times faster and 1000 times more memory. Applied to AI that means each decade AI gets 1000 times smarter. Quote. There will be about 30 doublings in the next 25 years. That's a factor of a billion in the capacity and price performance over today's technology, which is already quite formidable. End quote. Ray Kurzweil. Should AI ever catch up to us, it won't stay at our level for long. It will go soaring past us. An intelligence explosion. We feel as though we are in the midst of something big, a paradigm shift, the next stage of life something. Recordings of these feelings go back to at least the late 1950s. Quote. One conversation centered on the ever-accelerating progress of technology and changes in the mode of human life, which gives the appearance of approaching some essential singularity in the history of the race beyond which human affairs, as we know them, could not continue. End quote. Stanislav Ulam, in 1958, recounting a conversation with John von Neumann. Danny Hillis, who worked with Minsky's at the MIT AI lab compared it to being in the middle of an S-curve. Quote. So the first steps of the story that I told you about took a billion years apiece. And the next steps, like nervous systems and brains, took a few hundred million years. Then the next steps, like language and so on, took less than a million years. And these next steps, like electronics, seem to be taking only a few decades. The process is feeding on itself and becoming, I guess, autocatalytic is the word for it, when something reinforces its rate of change. The more it changes, the faster it changes. And I think that that's what we're seeing here in this explosion of curve. We're seeing this process feeding back on itself. End quote. Danny Hillis. We are alive at a most exciting time in history. But does it pose a threat to human life as we know it? The Doomsday Equation. What might this next stage of life be and what possibilities will it bring? How much time do we have left before it enters the world stage? Various signs, from different fields, all suggest it could be as near as a few decades. Heinz von Forster was versed in the fields of computer science, neurophysiology, mathematics and philosophy. The Pentagon funded von Forster to create and lead the Biological Computer Laboratory, where he pioneered the field of cybernetics. He published over 200 papers in his career, but his most famous is his 1960 Doomsday Equation. Von Forster's Doomsday Equation was the result of analyzing human population growth trends. 
he and his students gathered and analyzed the human population size over the previous 2000 years. They discovered it is growing faster than an exponential rate. The growth was not exponential, but hyperbolic. While an exponential trend doubles at a constant rate, von Forster found the time between doublings was shrinking. They plotted when this doubling time was projected to reach zero, a time where human population would, if it followed this trend, shoot to infinity. They arrived at the following projection, 2027 AD plus or minus 5.5 years. A similar pattern was discovered in economics. The economic historian James Bradford DeLong collected data to estimate world GDP over the previous one million years. Again, when plotted, it showed a trend of a decreasing time between successive doublings. It suggested a point in the early 21st century when the doubling time of the economy would reach zero. Two researchers created a model of population, technology, and inventors to estimate world technological development over time. They concluded, quote, Extremely simple mathematical models are shown to be able to account for 99.2 to 99.91 percent of all the variation in economic and demographic macrodynamics of the world for almost two millennia of its history. End quote. Andrei Karotayev and Artemy Malkov the trend of the data is so clear and consistent that someone in ancient Rome or the Middle Ages with the data of their time could have predicted this trend would reach its end sometime during the 21st century. A Singularity in History Quote, An analysis of the history of technology shows that technological change is exponential, contrary to the common sense intuitive linear view. So we won't experience 100 years of progress in the 21st century, it will be more like 20,000 years of progress, at today's rate. End quote. Ray Kurzweil, in 2000. Trends in the growth of population, the economy, and technology all point towards an emerging technological singularity in the near future. This is a point when machine intelligence vastly outstrips human intelligence. Once that occurs, humans will no longer be in the driver's seat of technological development. Unconstrained by the human population of scientists, inventors, and technologists, the only limit on the speed of technological progress will be the computing resources available for AI-based scientists, inventors and technologists. As of 2018, our fastest supercomputer, Summit, exceeded the computational power of one human brain. In a few decades of continued technological progress, our personal computers and smartphones will catch up to the computing power of Summit. Around this time, the total computing capacity of our machines will exceed the total computing power of all human brains. Quote, Essential historic developments match a binary scale marking exponentially declining temporal intervals, each half the size of the previous one, apparently converging to zero within the next few decades. The remaining series of faster and faster additional revolutions should converge in an omega point expected between 2030 and 2040, when individual machines will already approach the raw computing power of all human brains combined. Many of the present readers of this article should still be alive then. End quote. Jürgen Schmuber, AI Pioneer. Superpowers of Superintelligence. Irving John Good was a mathematician who worked alongside Alan Turing using computers to break German codes in World War II. Good was one of the first to realize the implications of a machine that could improve itself. Quote. Let an ultra-intelligent machine be defined as a machine that can far surpass all the intellectual activities of any man however clever. Since the design of machines is one of these intellectual activities, an ultra-intelligent machine could design even better machines, there would then unquestionably be an intelligence explosion, and the intelligence of man would be left far behind. Thus the first ultra-intelligent machine is the last invention that man need ever make. End quote. Irving John Good, 
in 1965. Such an intelligence would possess many attributes we might call superpowers. Nick Bostrom's book Superintelligence outlines six superpowers that superintelligent AIs might possess. Given its superpowers, a superintelligence aligned against humanity would be a curse. We would have little chance of prevailing against it. However, a superintelligence on our side would be a blessing. It could cure any disease, design any technology, fix any problem, even end world hunger and poverty. A superintelligence is how we could see 20,000 years of progress over the next 100 years. Quote. Everything that civilization has to offer is a product of human intelligence, we cannot predict what we might achieve when this intelligence is magnified by the tools that AI may provide, but the eradication of war, disease, and poverty would be high on anyone's list. Success in creating A, I would be the biggest event in human history. Unfortunately, it might also be the last. End quote. Stephen Hawking. In two decades, we've seen the rise of intelligent machines. Machines that are creative, that learn, that fool us into thinking they are human. If so much progress can come in such a short period, what will be possible over the coming centuries as computing technologies continue to grow exponentially in power? Limits of Intelligence There are some limits even superintelligence cannot overcome. For example, limits like the speed of light and matter densities of black holes. Physical laws imply physical limits on the processing speed, data density, and energy efficiency of computers. See, how good can technology get? However, the ultimate physical limits on computation are extraordinary. Bremerman's limit bounds the speed of the fastest possible computer to 10 to the power of 50 operations per second per kilogram of mass. The Summit supercomputer achieves about 10 to the power of 16 operations per second per kilogram, meaning we are about 10 to the power of 34 off from building the best possible computers. Computing technology could double another 112 times before we would reach this limit. The best physically possible computing material is referred to as computronium. It is the stuff of science fiction, but we can use the known physical bounds to speculate about what computronium could do. Humans often consider themselves as the pinnacle of intelligence, but in truth, even the combined intelligence of all human brains put together is but a speck next to what is possible. On an exponential chart, each increase by one represents a tenfold increase in computing power. The average pocket calculator can perform 10 operations per second and so is at a 1 on the chart. A modern smartphone that performs 1 trillion, 10 to the power of 12, operations per second, sits at 12. Chimps, humans, and the Summit supercomputer are all around the exop, 10 to the power of 18, scale, so all three sit around 18. The combined power of all computers in the world is around 10 to the power of 21 operations per second, and all 7 billion human brains together is at 10 to the power of 28 dot. On this scale, all of humanity put together sits halfway between a pocket calculator and a matryoshka brain, a hypothetical computer powered by a star, which achieves 10 to the power of 48 operations per second when operating at Landauer's limit of computing efficiency. Though much smaller, one kilogram of computronium, operating at physical limits, has 100 times the power of this star-powered computer, achieving 10 to the power of 50 operations per second. Jupiter weighs about 10 to the power of 27 kilograms. Converting the entire mass of Jupiter into computronium would yield a computer capable of 10 to the power of 77 operations per second. Ultimately AI could possess so much computing power that it could explore the entire evolutionary history of other worlds and civilizations in a fraction of a second through computer simulation. Consider that in the history of humanity around 100 billion humans have lived. 
If each person lived an average of 40 years this amounts to a total of 4 trillion years of human experience. 4 trillion years is roughly 10 to the power of 20 seconds. Since each second of human brain activity involves 10 to the power of 18 operations, then all experiences had by all of humanity can be produced with 10 to the power of 38 operations. An AI with 1 kilogram of computronium could experience all of humanity in a trillionth of a second. A Jupiter brain of computronium could in each second, dream the dreams of 10 to the power of 39 civilizations. Is our own existence within such a dream? The potential power of future computers raises many questions, such as are we living in a computer simulation, is it possible to create new universes, and is life insignificant in the grand scheme of things?